Pretty. So I'm Beck Lane and this is Studio 120. <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of uh, live feeds lately and live painting. I'm sorry, I'm still in my pajamas and it's, I think it's 1130. I was up to about three, four this morning working uh, out here painting because it's cooler. And so I've been sleeping in and normally I'm a get up wicked early, wicked early and get to work kind of person because uh, I paint better in the morning. But for some reason, my clock has changed. So you'll have to excuse the uh, exhaustion in my eyes and the, the jammies. Uh, but I was up all night working on uh, three, different three different portraits, taking the, not these girls, they're over here, taking the canvases and turning them so I could see them from a whole new angle and get the positioning a little bit more correct, not absolutely written in stone correct, just a little bit more correct than they have been. But I just came out, turned on the camera because I had something I really wanted to talk about. I've been having a conversation with uh, several people via Facebook and YouTube and private messaging who have wanted to paint. This happens, this happens all the time but people who have wanted to paint or wanted to be an artist, but they didn't feel they could, or they didn't know how to quite um, bridge from the sketches they were doing to something bigger. And so I've been trying to help guide a few people because I look through the library of artists who have made it, who have made it to the levels that I would like to make it and beyond and they didn't start off at that point where everything was perfect. Uh, Picasso didn't walk out and suddenly like, Guernica, <laughs> Guernica came to his, he worked and toiled. He worked and toiled. And I happen to be of the opinion that Picasso was not very good and tended to stick with more traditional work, uh, more traditional ways of painting he just didn't seem to be able to expand himself very far, but he had a lot behind him. He had some things that I want to talk about. And this is the thing that can take you from sketching on a small pad or dreaming about being an artist to actually being an artist and producing work. There's really only three things. I'm going to put this down. I was going to start off with, well, look what I did this morning. I knocked over one of my new lights and this broke off. And this is another part of my talk this morning. I could sit around for the rest of the day and cry and whine because I don't have, I just broke one of my perfect, one of my great brand new, generously given to me by my son lighting systems, or I could just work. I could cry and whine and sit down and watch Netflix for the rest of the day because I don't have the paints that I want. I don't have the money for any of it. I've said it before, I lost my job. I've always had to work, in, not always, but I've had to work a nine to five job for years because art is unpredictable and the sale of art is deeply unpredictable. And until you reach the levels of Picasso, blah, 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 we're all stuck in Van Gogh. We're all stuck, we're all stuck at the level of Van Gogh where we're struggling and we feel lost and we feel, I'm gonna put this down, we feel lost, we feel left behind. And I need to wipe my face because it's very warm. And we're struggling, 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 struggling. And it does get exhausting. It's very discouraging. But one of the things that I love, and I'll get back to this in a sec, one of the things I love about right now, about being in this COVID-19 era, I, do, I don't love COVID-19. I don't love that people are dying. I don't love that our government doesn't really care and that they're using money and um, 
money and, and ventilators to profit from themselves. I don't love COVID-19. People have lost their jobs, they're hungry. We're struggling, we're all struggling. What I love about right now is this has leveled the playing field for all of us. Beginners, people in the middle of their careers, or people at the top. I don't love that galleries are struggling, just like the artists they carry. Some are closing because they haven't acclimated to what I'm getting to next, one of the next two points I'm gonna make. Hopefully if I remember. They haven't acclimated to online. And I'm not meaning to disparage. I am out there tap dancing for six to seven to eight hours a day online, talking with people, talking about Patreon, talking about ways I could make diff money, you know, I could have income, my gators on Facebook, Patreon for monthly support, tips on Cash App and PayPal. I'm tap dancing. I am tap dancing like Gregory Hines in the 80s. YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, I now have four Facebook pages, illustrating, doing black and white illustrations and those videos. And I'm frustrated, like absolutely everyone. But we keep, I use me as an example, always, always, always from my perspective. But you know what we do? And a studio is nothing but this. We just, it is about, we just keep working. We just keep working. We find a way to acclimate to the, to the times and we leverage them as much as we possibly can. We have, we have YouTube, we have Patreon, we have Cash App, we have PayPal, we have a million different ways now that we can, you know, fingers crossed, be seen. Galleries are struggling, okay. Then you find another way around. I don't have money. Find another way around. I don't, I can't afford oils. Find another way around because there are no rules in painting, specifically house paint. I have a friend who paints with tar. I have a friend who mixes uh, charcoal. There are a million different ways we can still produce work. We just need three things. And this is gonna be, this is the point of the whole video because I am hearing from people who want to be artists, but they feel, oh wow, my collar, but they don't feel they can be because they didn't go to art school. Well, very few people are going to art school now. And this gets me to the point. Art school is lovely. You can learn the basics. You can learn so much You've got that interaction and that time to expand who you are. Normally. But we have ways to explore artists and find galleries, uh, not galleries, but find other artists. Find, find out about art history, art technique. We've got YouTube. We've got Vimeo. We've got, I think it's Vimeo. Anyway, we've got a whole bunch of different ways where you can find out about the medium you're interested in and how it works. There are a million different ways now. Van Gogh had nothing. He had his brother Theo, his only thread to the world, his only dependable thread to the world. We have to make our own and we can make our own. 
But as I was getting to, oh, I didn't turn the light on on this thing. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, really, there's only three things that you need to become an artist, to become anything, anything you want to be. Take advantage of this quiet time when the earth is shut down, when the human world is shut down. Find these three things in yourselves and leverage them. As well as, you know, online social media and all that stuff. Ready? Ready? Three things. Drive, passion, and intent. That's what you need. You don't need the $100 brushes. You don't need the fancy, you know, Gamsol, minerals. You don't need any of it. You find your drive, your passion, and your intent, which I think is the most important thing and you will become that artist that you want to be. What is it that makes you want to create artwork? What makes you love art? What makes you absolutely love art and the idea of being an artist? That's where you'll find your drive and passion. And if you feel you can't, think about Picasso. Think about his simple lines his simple sketches, what makes them great. And especially at the time he did them because they were an anomaly. Some of it was not, some of it was very typical, but some of his ideas were a complete anomaly to the time, completely against the fashion and the trends of the time. It was his intent. Think about Van Gogh. This is what he had. Okay, I want to make sure my fingers aren't on there. Alice Neal, one of the greatest portrait artists um, of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. She transformed portraiture. Sitting in her tiny apartment in New York, painting celebrities and painting ordinary people, her friends, her neighbors. She helped to transform portraiture. Van Gogh transformed the world. He wasn't fashionable. He had no one out there showing him. He did not go to art school. He got hints from friends and, you know, he got technique from different friends and ideas from different friends. But it came from inside. It came from his passion, his drive, and then his intent to paint. The great works. His early works were more following tradition. He looked at the people around him and painted what he saw and what he knew. The darkness. And then as he became more practiced, in his art. <clears throat> his passion exploded in his drive. So I was saying to a friend of mine, a uh, new friend of mine earlier, Wayne, um, who's cleaning his garage because of these, you know, silly little videos. Cleaning his garage because he wants to be an artist. He wants to be an artist. There is your passion, Wayne. There is your drive. You want this so badly. You're creating a space to expand yourself and to become the artist you want to be. That's incredible. Most people just sit around to dream about it. One day, one day, one day. One day, one day, one day, I'll have the light bulb, the correct lighting system, the light bulbs I need. I'll have all the paint I want. I'll have the correct red. I'll have that $100 brush 
that I was told I needed or I think I need. He is going ahead and he is creating a space. And we have been talking about hows and who's to follow, who, who, what artists he could look at that are similar to his technique and, and start following in their direction. Not that he has to paint just like anyone or any of us have to paint or create just like anyone, that's silly. And especially right now, when it is a level, it's an absolute decimated level playing field. We can explore. Oop. We have the time to explore and look into, find our drive, passion, and intent. And again, that's the most, um, intent is probably well, drive and passion are really important, but intent, my intent. Let me give you an example. I used to paint, very, I used to try to paint fairly traditional figures. My intent for the past nine, 10 years has been to find the energy within my abstracts, within the flower pieces I'm doing for a job, within within my figures. It's getting the feel of them correct, but also getting the feel of them, person within, their energy, out onto the canvas. And people respond to it. From what I understand, people, people see it and get it. My paintings are about energy. They're about energy but they're also about the act of painting, which is something very powerful for me. It's breaking down painting while painting, showing non-painters, non-artists, how to paint, not just in videos, but in the physical painting, how to paint, how we construct a figure, a face, how we construct a flower, a scene, through paint. So I have several different layers of, of intent. Energy is the big one. Feel it, feel it, feel it. The other is deconstructing painting so people who don't paint can see how it's done. Okay. That's my diatribe, run out of words, gonna go drink more coffee and shower because I'm sweaty. And we'll do another live video in a little bit. Anyway, there we go. I think that's it. Drive, passion, and intent. Make your space. Clean out your garage or your basement or a back bedroom or a tiny space in your house. It was a great time to just start exploring who you are as an artist, or a writer, or a singer, or any one of the millions of different opportunities there are in art. Find it, find it. I'm gonna leave on a high note, all right? <laughs> and shower, ciao.